This is the Youth Bible with Nikki and Pippa Gumbel, day 160. Today's topic is stay loyal. And loyalty is a combination of love and faithfulness. But disloyalty destroys our families, churches, businesses, political parties, and even nations. As well as how do we hand out our loyalty to other people in the right ways? Well, let's find out what loyalty really means in today's devotion. In 2007, a group of 23 South Korean missionaries were captured by the Taliban in Afghanistan. They were terrified. The Taliban separated the group, isolated them and confiscated their possessions. One of the Korean women managed to hold on to her Bible. She ripped it into 23 pieces and secretly gave each of them a portion so that wherever they were, each person could read a part of scripture when no one was watching. The group knew that the Taliban had decided to kill them one at a time. One by one, the missionaries surrendered their lives again to Jesus, saying, Lord, if you want me to die for your sake, I'll do it. Then the pastor said, I've talked to the Taliban because they're going to start killing us. And I've told their leaders that if anyone dies, I die first because I'm your pastor. Another said, no, because... I also am a pastor, and I am your elder. I die first. Then the pastor came back and said, You're not ordained. I've been ordained. I die first. And sure enough, he died first. Two were killed before the rest were eventually rescued. They had demonstrated extraordinary loyalty to God and to each other. Loyalty is a combination of love and faithfulness. It's a quality often lacking in our society today. Disloyalty destroys families, churches, businesses, political parties, and even nations. From Proverbs 14. The simple believe anything, but the prudent give thought to their steps. The wise fear the Lord and shun evil, but a fool is hot-headed and yet feels secure. Evildoers will bow down in the presence of the good, and the wicked at the gates of the righteous. It is a sin to despise one's neighbour, but blessed is the one who is kind to the needy. Do not those who plot evil go astray, but those who plan what is good find love and faithfulness. Pursue loyalty to God in your plans. Our first loyalty is to God. His favour rests on those who are God-loyal. The book of Proverbs is full of practical wisdom. It encourages you, for example, to be discerning about what you believe. The gullible believe anything they're told. The prudent sift and weigh every word. Ultimately, wisdom is about how you relate to God. The wise fear the Lord and shun evil. Fear of the Lord is an attitude. Healthy respect and loyalty means involving Him in your plans. Be very careful about the plans you make, that they are for good and not for evil. Eventually, even the wicked will respect God-loyal people. Those who plan what is good find love and faithfulness. The word for find is sometimes translated show. Both are true. Those who plan what is good not only find love and faithfulness, they show love and faithfulness as well. This is the heart of loyalty, to show love and faithfulness. This is contrasted with those who selfishly plot evil and go astray. Lord, help me to be wise and God-loyal in my plans. May we as a community of God-loyal people plan what is good and find love and faithfulness. New Testament from Acts 5. The apostles performed many signs and wonders among the people. More and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. Crowds gathered also from the towns around Jerusalem, bringing those who were ill and those tormented by impure spirits and all of them were healed. Then the high priest and all his associates, who were members of the party of the Sadducees, were filled with jealousy. They arrested the apostles and put them in the public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the jail and brought them out. Go, stand at the temple courts, he said, and tell the people all about this new life. At daybreak, they entered the temple courts, as they had been told, and began to teach the people. When the high priest and his associates arrived, they called together the Sanhedrin, the full assembly of the elders of Israel, and sent to the jail for the apostles. 
but on arriving at the jail, the officers did not find them there. Then, someone came and said, Look, the men you put in jail are standing in the temple courts, teaching the people. The apostles were brought in and made to appear before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest. We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, he said. Yet you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles replied, We must obey God rather than human beings. The God of our ancestors raised Jesus from the dead, whom you killed by hanging him on a cross. God exalted him to his own right hand as prince and saviour, that he might bring Israel to repentance and forgive their sins. We are witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were furious and wanted to put them to death. But a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law, who was honoured by all the people, stood up. Then he addressed the Sanhedrin, Men of Israel, consider carefully what you intend to do to these men. Some time ago, Thi disappeared, claiming to be somebody, and about 400 men rallied to him. He was killed, all his followers were dispersed, and it all came to nothing. Therefore, in the present case, I advise you, leave these men alone, let them go, for if their purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourselves fighting against God. They called the apostles in and had them flogged. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. The apostles left the Sanhedrin, rejoicing because they had been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Messiah. Pursue loyalty to Jesus in your words. As the apostles went out and preached the good news, they performed many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. More and more men and women believed in the Lord and were added to their number. As a result, crowds gathered, bringing their sick. All of them were healed. Sadly, their success led to jealousy from religious leaders. Be warned, envy is such a temptation for those of us who are seen as religious. In their jealousy, they arrested the apostles and put them in jail. But once again, God performed a miracle. He sent an angel of the Lord to open the doors of the jail and bring them out. With huge courage, they obeyed the command to go stand in the temple courts and tell the people the full message of this new life. When they were caught doing exactly what they'd been arrested for doing in the first place, they were re-arrested and brought before the Sanhedrin to be questioned by the high priest who said to them, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name, yet you fill Jerusalem with your teaching and are determined to make us guilty of this man's blood. Peter and the other apostles were loyal to God and to their calling. They replied, We must obey God rather than human beings. Jesus said, Give to Caesar what is Caesar's and to God what is God's. In saying this, he defined the limits of the authority of human beings and our loyalty to it. When it conflicts with loyalty to God, God takes precedence. Out of loyalty to God, they continued preaching the gospel, even when they were on trial. Their brief defense is a model sermon. It's all about Jesus. It's astonishing that they were able to cover so much in such a short presentation. They preach about the cross, resurrection, and the exaltation of Jesus. They proclaimed Jesus as Prince and Savior. The talk includes a description of the way of salvation, repentance, and forgiveness of sins. In addition, they managed to include the whole Trinity, God the Father, the God of our ancestors, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit. This sermon produces such fury that like the South Korean missionaries, they face the threat of death. However, in the providence of God, there was a wise man on the Sanhedrin, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, who pointed out to his fellow members by giving examples from recent history that if the apostle's purpose or activity is of human origin, it will fail. But if it's from God, you will not be able to stop these men. You will only find yourself fighting against God. Although his speech persuaded them, nevertheless, the apostles were flogged in order not to speak in the name of Jesus. Once again, with extraordinary courage and loyalty to God and their calling, the apostles left the Sanhedrin rejoicing because they'd been counted worthy of suffering disgrace for the name. Day after day, 
in the temple courts and from house to house, they never stopped teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. Lord, may we be inspired by the example of the apostles and those like the South Korean missionaries who followed in their footsteps. May we never stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus is the Christ. Old Testament from 2 Samuel 14 and 15. Joab, son of Zariah, knew that the king's heart longed for Absalom. Your servant Joab did this to change the present situation. My Lord has wisdom like that of an angel of God. He knows everything that happens in the land. The king said to Joab, very well, I will do it. Go, bring back the young man Absalom. Joab fell with his face to the ground to pay him honor, and he blessed the king. Joab said, today your servant knows that he has found favor in your eyes, my lord, my lord the king, because the king has granted his servant's request. Whenever anyone approached him to bow down before him, Absalom would reach out his hand, take hold of him, and kiss him. Absalom behaved in this way towards all the Israelites who came to the king asking for justice, and so he stole the hearts of the people of Israel. Pursue loyalty to each other in your heart. Loyalty is such an attractive characteristic in a person. Disloyalty is subversive and betrays trust. Disloyalty can undermine the leadership in a church, business, or even a nation. In David's case, disloyalty came from his own son. This must have been so painful for him. David loved Absalom. The king's heart longed for Absalom. God speaks to David through the wise woman from Tekoa. As a result, David says, go bring back the young man Absalom. When he returned, the king kissed Absalom. David gave him another opportunity to be a loyal son. Tragically, David's love and loyalty to Absalom were not returned. We see here a powerful description of how disloyalty works. There are always opportunities for disloyalty in any situation. For example, in the government, workplace, or in the church, there are bound to be those who complain. If you are a loyal person, you will help to deal with these complaints and attempt to diffuse them. Of course, loyalty does not mean never speaking up. Quite the reverse. It's been said, loyalty means I am with you whether you are wrong or right, but I will tell you when you're wrong and help you get it right. Absalom failed the loyalty test. He would say to the complainers, look, you've got a strong case, but the king isn't going to listen to you. Then he'd say, why doesn't someone make me a judge for this country? Anyone with a case could bring it to me and I'd settle things fair and square. Of course, this is absolute nonsense, but it's easy to make promises of this kind. The disloyal person says, if only I were in charge, everything would be so much better. In this way, Absalom stole the hearts of the people of Israel. Disloyalty begins in our hearts and in our thinking. So does loyalty. Guard your heart and your thinking and do not allow your heart to be stolen. However, here they found a rallying point around Absalom and the conspiracy gained strength and Absalom's following kept on increasing. Those who are feeling discontented in any situation always look for a rallying point. They look for someone among the leadership team around whom they can rally. If the entire leadership team remains faithful, the discontents will be unsuccessful. Lord, help us to stay loyal to our leaders, to our national leaders and governments, parents, church leaders and bosses. Lord, guard our hearts, keep us loyal, loving and faithful to you and to one another. Pepper adds, In 2 Samuel 14, we see that being beautiful on the outside doesn't make you beautiful on the inside. Absalom had a perfect appearance. But what was going on on the inside was quite different. People spend hours going to the gyms, hairdressers, doing makeup, clothes shopping, and working on the outward appearance. But what really matters 
is what's going on on the inside. And we all need to work harder on the inner beauty. I know I do. Let's pray. Lord, help me to stay loyal to you. Help me to keep my eyes fixed on you and your ways. Lord, when I say yes, let it mean yes. And when I say no, let it mean no. Help me to be honest with my words today. In Jesus' name.